Welcome, Eurovision fans. It's kind of that mad rush for Eurovision, and there's a song I really want to help if I can. Uh, so we're going to look at Portugal, Konano Sichirish. I, I trying to pronounce it right, um, Telemovish, and he did a, an interview with Wee Blogs. I've not seen it. It just literally flashed on my screen, and I'm like, we're going to look at it. Anything I can do to help, I'm trying to help the countries that I want to help here in the last uh, week, you know, give exposures. There's a lot of songs I love, so I'm trying to help any in the way that I can, you know, like Georgia, Serbia, Portugal, Greece, uh, anything I can do to help, I try to do that. <laughs> so let's take a look at Conan with William. <laughs> These guys were just like, let me tell you off the start. These guys were just like the first ones that gave us like the most like an exciting review of my song. We were so excited that you got that you both enjoyed it. Oh, truthfully. and we still enjoy it. Thank you oh, so man. much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, dancer, honey, Joao. This is a custom uh, now. Bernardo, oh. are we all in the shot? Bernardo. <laughs> Joao. <laughs> Hello, Joao. Hello. Bernardo, honey, are we all in the camera shot? <laughs> are we in the camera shot? I want all their shoulders. Mm. If not, you back it up. I'm okay. sorry. Here we go. He is the artist formerly known as Tiago Maranza. Oh, my God. I'm ready. And he is, Tiago. wow, that is John for all y'all English speakers from Puerto Rico. Somebody did write me and tell me he was John. <laughs> I said, call him John. You can't pronounce his name right. <laughs> I still try. Joao. What was your first rehearsal? The very first one was actually nicer than the second. I don't know too much why. Well, specifically I know. is because we asked for this whole bunch of features that were not populated in the show so we were a little bit upset that the second time they still didn't bring it they around. didn't have it but, oh okay i hope you need it from albania is okay and has her eagle that's i'm thinking of that too Devin's not here yeah i'm mad i'm mad Devin. <laughs> Devin at <laughs> now tell me you dress as a beautiful Devin. to me leaf or exotic creature from the rainforest of amazonia oh, what is your costume that is good well um i think you can read a little bit of mantis there praying mantis right? oh, okay the somebody man. told me that praying for something apart from eating other specimens Maybe I'm praying for something, praying for change, praying yeah. for revolution, energy, rebirth, you know? Yeah. It's in a theme. So animalistic. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> animalistic. <laughs> now, the spoons that were on your face in Portugal are not here. Spoons? Spoons. What uh -oh. is this buffoonery? It was not spoons. <laughs> it was a golden mask that I designed with my beautiful Adriana Ribeiro. Uh -huh. And people kind of picked it up as spoons. But I, I see. Well, I, I really love gelato too, mm. so I, I like I like and cakes, adoro bolos. <laughs> you feed us your love, and so it was spoons. Very chiado chic. Now tell me about this one, Joao. Where did you find him, and what does he bring to your performance? <laughs> well, what he brings to performance, <laughs> apart from clownery and. Also, this shit, like the, the <laughs> beam and points, and what not, the classical dance of it. No, it brings a lot of energy, like the, the guttural energy that sometimes I cannot deliver because I'm focused singing. He really delivers it. It's true, he's more stoic. I, I use, I usually and Zhao brings it to life. He's doing what I probably would do if I weren't focused on singing. I see. You yeah. sing with this and this. You mm. sing with this. <laughs> like it's like I'm a filter of him. Like as the public, I receive what he's doing, what he did on, when he constructed this sound, this music, and what he's doing when he's singing. And I'm like receiving this, and I'm I'm transforming and interpreting for the public and painting and the picture yeah, for all of us. Actually, it was this guy that taught me how to dance. Wait a minute, you taught him how to dance? Well, that, that's a blurry story. I was just older, and I was dancing in a B-Day party or like a New Year's Eve party. And it was like Destiny's Child or something that he re was really into, too. Um, and I was dancing, and he went nuts. He was like this big. He was like a, a, a fetus. A fetus. He generally danced at home. And so he, he saw somebody dance, and he was like, so... Um, I, this, does this mean that I can dance too public, publicly? 
That was his validation for me. I don't know. This is the story that he tells. <laughs> he might confirm it or not. It's the truth. Yeah. And especially also because he's a man and he was a man dancing like he wanted to. And for me as a child, like I could embrace it and like I could do whatever I felt like because he empowered me that way. Mm. Because he's like six or years older than me. So like he really empowered me that way. I didn't know him that well. And it was like... He, what he was saying was like, if I'm doing it and I'm here, you can do it as well, and like you can relate to that with all of your heart. What a beautiful friendship! It's very cool. Share. Uh, yeah. Well, well, we've known each other for like 12, 13 years. That's what I wanted yeah. to know. How long did they know each other? Wow. Worked in a sex shop. Yeah, it's very, very, <laughs> very true. <laughs> what skills are necessary to be a good sex shop employee? I don't know, like, mainly for me what worked was I was there not as a man, not as a woman, not as anybody. I was there as an entity, a human entity. So people would um, see me come through as a neutral energy, like an energy that would not judge or be attracted to them or define what their sexuality was about so i was my job was just to make them feel comfortable in what they wanted to bring to their relationship to their own um experience of their body at the end of the day and i found like this craziest stories that are all of them are valid of course but it was very it it was as enriching for them as it was for me because i was learning from them also So, That's yeah. cool. Yeah. More than just a business in the sex shop and playing around with dildos and uh, little cunts. Like, it was the human experience. <laughs> and I know it sounds kind of funny, but it is. I get what he's saying because uh, I work in a pharmacy and there is a, you know, it's not a sex shop. There's not dildos. There are like rings and stuff, vibrating rings and all that. And you have to, you know, keep a straight face and, you know, not judge the people and just go in there and, you know, sell the stuff and uh, uh, help people find what they need. And so, I mean, a lot of it's more like birth control and stuff like that. That's, um, you know, being a pharmacy, we have more preventative stuff like that. But uh, yeah, yeah, you just have to uh, do it without judgment. And, uh, you know, you're, you're there to perform a job. Very. No, I feel actually, I feel like my body has tingles. Cause People always react weird when they hear, oh, you're in a sex shop. Oh. <laughs> Then they start forming oh, weird ideas. Like, I, I, really, I really believe, like, we're all dressed in different ways. We all speak differently. We all speak sometimes the same. We all try to find ourselves in others. But you really have to work into finding your way into yourself. Very wise. mainly what we bring. Like, it's just ourselves, like, in the most heart um <laughs> it's a beating heart y'all we share for one, one heart he knows who yeah. he is poetic. Yeah. i don't know that's yeah. a good thing today cyprus tamta she told us that you guys are her favorite entry oh she's just a sweetheart so sweet yeah. yeah we met her at, at the major of at azalea a party he, he yeah. threw a party and she was there and she was just like i want to meet him like bring bring <laughs> him to me bring, or bring me to him and so we met she was just like we had a very deep conversation actually about just your physical form and um some permits that you have sometimes to put out there just so that people can respect your body and also you yourself respect your body and i was really worried about her because she had an injury as well so oh we yeah i heard really about that kind of like from a, a conversation of entertainment and whatnot and like i like your music yeah but then it escalated into something more and i was really worried about her but i know she will do fine For sure. It was like, uh, for me, it was super interesting to, like, it didn't, we didn't have to put any effort on relating to her. Like, yeah. she appeared and it was like, oh, you're here and yeah, you're there. And like, let's just start having a conversation yeah. so neutral and so together. It was like, it was like, wow, okay, she was really there. It was just like, we skipped the bullshit, you know? Like, yeah. we skipped the, oh, yeah, you're here. <laughs> No, it was like, bitch, I want to tell you something. You want to tell me something too? Yeah, my heart is here. Your heart is there. Like, let's go. You know? <laughs> yeah. Your body is on display during the performance. This takes uh -huh. confidence and, you know, self-belief. Mm. Did he help you develop that confidence? 
actually like we are like as we have a, a really special relationship of well, cool. re, like we're super close friends we always uh, stick together and we always help each other on what we feel like we need help and but for that I feel like actually it's not that uh, it's like my body it's almost covered like I have, um, I'm only mm. like showing this part because I have the gloves and I have like the high waist so I just have this showing and it's okay for me actually like I don't have to I didn't have to think about it when we did it at first in Portugal I was like oh my god would this would it be okay like <laughs> mm, maybe not but then when he did we did it and we did it in the first semi-final it was like okay it works well visually so I'm okay with it <laughs> oh my goodness I just let me just say something I just wish like that girls' breasts were as liberated as his nipples. That's so uh, even true. for him, is like a... That's actually a really funny point because I talked to a... Uh, I, I work in, a, in the pharmacy and I was talking to one of the department managers today and we had this exact same conversation like what's the difference between a guy and a girl being able to walk around and not have a shirt? Why is it sexual if one does it and the other you know doesn't i we we had that exact conversation and you know it's just stupid that that's a uh it's a thing you know i you know and i i was saying i'm like not that i want to be the weirdo creepo that says you know girls should be topless because i want to see it everywhere but it's it's stupid like why is there a difference i i don't get it so it's interesting they bring that up because i had this exact conversation today you know everybody should be able to do that and get sun if they want or do whatever and you know not have to wear restrictions and stuff uh that's something that yeah is really stupid about society um, a privilege to just be on national tv with his nipple showing because so many women cannot do it and but we're just this far from getting it yeah it's true without it being sexualized yes we all have them yeah of course let's share them yeah absolutely <laughs> Now, look, like, we're going to wrap this up, but Conan Osiris, legendary Portuguese singer, do you have a message for all oh of your God. new... No, it's the truth. It's the truth. Do you have a message for all of your new fans on Wee Wee Blogs? For my new fans, you know what? Like, first of all, let me just thank you guys. I told you this prior to this, like, but thank you, Wee Wee, because you guys just embraced our... Like, the first time I saw your review was so, like, heartwarming because it really put a lot of aspects that we have and sometimes not even we can remember and describe. So thank you for showing us to like the millions of people out there that are embracing us and sending us text messages every day. Like I'm receiving messages in Cyrillic that I cannot <laughs> even read. I have to do a translator. It's also because of you guys. So thank you. Oh and thank goodness. you for doing it. So sweet. Should we just sing the song to take us out? Okay. I want to see you. I want to see you sing. I want to see him. <laughs> we, I mean you. Oh, yeah. oh, my. oh my God. He doesn't know the song. Okay, I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach. O telele, eu vou partir o telemóvel. O teu e o meu. Oh, he sounds so good. He's got such a great voice. Very unique. Yeah, I really enjoy that. You know, it's just nice to see his personality a little bit. You know, he's, he's, uh, you know, people will be quick to be like, the song's weird, he's weird. You know, I, I've said that in the past, but no, he's just, he's, he's, he's just an individual. And, you know, he's, it's fun to see him talking, you know, here with William. And uh, like Tara said, William does a good job of getting them to talk and talking about interesting things. So I uh, mentioned that I like Devin a lot, too, as an interviewer because he opens people up. But, yeah, they both do a great job. So, yeah, Tara, you're right. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, definitely an interesting interview and uh, a lot of fun. So uh, vote for Conan and uh, let's hope he gets into the finals because it's a song I want to see. I want to see what they do with the costumes and if they change it later on. So, yeah, thank you for watching. And for now, Lethargic Sloth out.